John Grissom was the guy who molested me. It's a player theory what he's saying. We're back with our exclusive investigation into lost audio tapes revealing Corey Feldman's first report of sexual abuse to the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department, as he has been claiming all along. Now, we just listened to parts of those tapes. Now, I want to ask the big question. What do these tapes mean for an investigation into Corey's abusers? So Corey's back, along with a team of legal experts, nationally renowned analyst Beth Harris is here, who's also a former prosecutor, lawyer and advocate for sexual abuse victims, Marcy Hamilton also joins us. I've got two of the biggest experts sitting down together with Corey, so I want to get some answers for everybody who's listening in America. So first off, uh, Beth, you hear the tapes. They're, they're pretty damning. Why wouldn't they investigate further? Because these detectives, it appears to me, were completely focused on Michael Jackson. Corey wasn't giving them what they were hoping. They were Correct. hoping to build a case with more, more accusers, and they weren't getting it. And Grissom wasn't in their jurisdiction, right? I didn't know until hearing the recording just now that the police had his name. And I had originally thought that Corey gave the police the name. So that's very curious to me why Grissom was on their radar and they weren't doing anything with it. But they were focused on Michael Jackson. He was the big fish there. So I'm wondering if Grissom was actually tantalizing them with the belief that Corey had the goods because Corey must be getting abused by Michael Jackson. Or what about this? What if Grissom was in my life as a setup all along to try to destroy my career? the same way that they were trying to destroy Michael's career. I mean, I can't really speak to that. But, I don't but, know but, enough but, about what it. What you but. can speak to, though, is the legal and ethical obligation of police and, or sheriffs, in this case, of one jurisdiction, sharing information they know that could not only help the person they're talking to, but generations on of in kids that were harmed as, as a, as a, as a, requi as a as a result of them not speaking. Okay, I, I'm not aware of a legal obligation to pass on information that's out of their jurisdiction, but it's the right thing to do, and to say you need to look at this guy because maybe there are other complaints coming in. That's what good detectives do. Can, can I say something that even in the most recent interview that I did with them, they them being LAPD, LAPD, yeah. they literally said to me that they should, you know get this report as a separate report regardless of what I said before because it's got to be with them and they were very clear that if, if you're in New York and this happened in New York we're gonna set you up with local New York police but that's and if it's now, in LA we're gonna set you up with LA police. So, you know the climate is different now everybody's it's in our but conscience it's, now. It's, everybody's acting be, on it yeah, it's see. becoming better I still don't think we're there and I want to get that in a second but the Santa Barbara's uh, the Sheriff's Department who had the original copies of the 1993 tape they just found them told us they gave copies to the LAPD just days ago, which the LAPD has confirmed to us. Has the LAPD reached out to you subsequent? No, but they're a little busy with the fires going on. Yeah, they're, they, they are busy, and no, I, 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 guess. I, I get all that. But this issue of the statute of limitations comes up all the time, and the abuse that we've been hearing about from you and others mm -hmm. uh, continues to be pardoned, so to speak. And this is a big part of Corey's truth campaign. So I'm going to go to Marcy. This is an area that you spent a good part of your life yep. cr crusading around. You argue that today's sex abuse laws are designed to silence the victims. Why is that? Right. We've created a legal culture that keeps the victims quiet and keeps the powerful in business. And so our statutes of limitations are orchestrated so a child doesn't get to the court fast enough. And you were so young, Corey. Mm -hmm. Even when you went, when you were in your 20s, you were still very young to come forward. On average, it's about age 42 of people coming forward. Really, 42? Really, that's the average oh. age. And right. so, uh, you know, we, we've set up the system so that the assumption was a child understood what was happening to them, uh, it was bad, and they would go tell someone, just like a broken leg, right? So right. if a kid has a broken leg, they don't, like, go and hide it. They go tell their mom, it hurts, and, and they go to the hospital. But kids don't understand sex abuse. They don't, they can't process it. Mm. And so since they can't do that, it ends up being secret. It's in the predator's interest to keep it secret. Uh, and frankly, law enforcement has dropped the ball in a lot of cases, and often because they thought the statute of limitations would have expired. So let me show you something, Corey, but I think all of America needs to hear this. This is a chart that we made based on your work, RC. And I want you to take a look a minute and just find the state that you live in. 
All right. So the curve here, the, the bar goes from the worst for predators, best for victims, are the greens, like a green light, you get a strophic light, you want to be in one of these states, right? Uh, the yellow is just about to turn, maybe going green, but why aren't we already there? And then I got the reds over here. These states don't defend the victims as much as they could. Right? And I think they can do more to protect victims, right? What I want to do is change this by asking for help. New York State currently, and Marcy, you know this, but I'm making right. clear for everybody. New York State currently is under a lot of pressure because we're one of the red states, right? And it's the closest we've ever been to changing the law. So tomorrow, literally tomorrow, I want everyone to call New York State Senate Majority Leader John Flanagan. Here's his picture. I want you to go after him and ask him to help. And ask him to pass the Child Victims Act it is a big issue. His number's on our website. I have emailed him, I have called him, and I've gotten not, uh, no response so far. And that's why I need you to help me. Let's get one state, a big state, a state that sort of sh bellwether shapes the rest of the country in some ways to get this done. Call him and get it started. And after that, I want you to all get, you know, I'm going to give you all the contact information for all the legislators in all the states on that uh, red bar that I showed you. I want you to, along with the information from Marcy's organization called Child USA, use that to call them and make it happen. If you don't do it, it's not going to change. Make the call, because you never know if the person you're helping is someone that you're loving or someone not even born yet that, that you could be chipping in to support. What would it mean for you, Corey, because it's been your passion, to get all those states that are falling behind, that are lagging, to where they need to be in terms of protecting victims? Well, it, it's not even, it doesn't even come within measure. I mean, at the end of the day, this is, this must happen. And it's not about me. It's about all of the kids. It's about it's about our future on this planet. If we are going to sustain as a race, we must learn to take care of our children. Corey has been raising money and awareness about sex abuse through his campaigns called the Truth Campaign. What's the biggest need right now? How do we help? <laughs> well, the biggest need is we need donations. I mean, quite honestly, we need donations. I, there's a GoFundMe, which I put up specifically for my security needs so that I can have security guards to protect me and hopefully get some lawyers to protect me. The other one is to make the film, which is the film of my life story, and it's about truth. Now, both of these campaigns, as I started to say, have been reported for fraud. They have. Both of them. By haters. And let me tell you a little bit about those haters. Many of them, if you follow the thread, if you watch on Twitter, there's people constantly coming at me, giving misinformation, spouting lies, trying to disorient people, trying to even frighten my supporters. We have very vocal, very avid supporters, which I call the Feld fam. They're an amazing group of people who are all very lovely, incredible people that want to fight for justice. And all of those people, all of those people in the last month for vocally supporting me or for donating to me have been harassed, ridiculed, and in some cases threatened because they're supporting me. That is not okay. All right. You've heard it. In many ways, this should appeal to you. Go to DrOz.com. Take action today. Call somebody. Make change happen. And please right donate. Back. Donate.